Hey guys, how's it going? Now, a couple of days ago, one of my friends asked me that what was the best budget flagship or a flagship phone for that matter around the 55 uh, price tag in the market to buy right now. And since I've been using the OnePlus 8 Pro, he just wanted to really inquire that whether the OnePlus 8 Pro is recommendable or not. And to be honest, <laughs> I actually advised him to get the OnePlus 8T. And it got me thinking that a lot of you guys have been thinking about whether the OnePlus 8T or the OnePlus 8 Pro, which phone to buy among these two. And you know, it's been a long time. And although I've been using the 8 Pro as my daily driver, I still feel safe in saying that the OnePlus 8T is a much better buy over the OnePlus 8 Pro. This is Warren from Guiding Deck, and you're watching my in-depth review of the OnePlus 8T and why I feel that it's one of the best, actually it is the best phone for pretty much a lot of users out there and why you should get it instead of any other phone in the market. Let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about the design first. And right off the bat, I want to say a couple of things. First off is the fact that I genuinely do not like the design here. But there's a background story to it. See, the thing is, as reviewers, we've been seeing this specifically, I'm talking about that camera module. We've been seeing this design for a very long time from the likes of Realme, Vivo, and even IQ. And honestly, I'm sick and tired of it. But that's me because I've been using and like actually using that kind of a camera module on a smartphone in my hand for the last six, seven, eight, maybe nine months now. But as a consumer, if you're buying a new phone, that design actually seems to be quite attractive. Like my friend was instantly like, yeah, you know, this camera module looks great. And I was like, seriously, you like this? But then I thought about it and I'm like, yeah, because he hasn't used anything like that before, right? See, I personally, if you ask me the best camera module that I've used till date is still on the OnePlus 7T. That's the most unique and that is the one that I prefer the most. OnePlus should have stuck with that. But other than that, for a normal consumer, I can totally understand why you might want to get the OnePlus 8T's camera module. And it completely makes a lot of sense. It looks really good. And other than that, also the whole design of the phone is pretty good. I mean, if you compare it to the other competition, such as the Realme X50 Pro or the Vivo IQ, those are very heavy phones. The OnePlus 8T is not that heavy. It is quite ergonomic. And that flat screen really, really adds on to that value. I mean, one of the biggest complaints that almost everyone in the market had when the OnePlus 8 was announced, that it was like, okay, the end of flat screens, that no more flat screens, OnePlus is owing all curved screen. And then the OnePlus 8T came and everyone, like everyone liked it. Because whatever your preference might be, the bottom line is that flat screens are better to use, easy to use and easy to repair as well and are comparatively cheaper as well. So yeah, on the whole, the design of the OnePlus 8T is amazing and frankly speaking, it's better than the 8 Pro in a lot of ways. Now, some of you might bring about the factor that the OnePlus 8 Pro offers IP certification and to that, I'll just say that is a certification. OnePlus has said it a lot of times before and a lot of other reviewers have tested this as well. If you remove the certification part, both the phones are equally waterproof. It's just that the 8 Pro comes with certification and the 8T does not. Both are equally water... Well, to be honest, I said waterproof, but it's water resistant, not proof. Keep that in mind. Neither of these phones are waterproof. They're just water resistant. And even then, nobody's going to tell you like, yeah, go and use your phone in the swimming pool or something like that. They're just there to survive heavy rainfalls or something like that. So keep that in mind. Then there's the display. And Honestly, Full HD 120Hz, amazing. The AMOLED panel here is one of the best ones on the market. It's as good as Samsung's panel. And honestly, it comes from the same house, so it makes a lot of sense. And the panel is really, really good. Now, some of you might be saying that, okay, the 8 Pro offers a quad digit resolution. And to that, I'll just say, for most users, you won't even notice the difference in Full HD and Quad HD on that screen size. I won't deny the fact that it's noticeable, but it's only noticeable when you're watching some still content on your screen. Now, what are those use cases? When you're watching, like browsing through your gallery for photographs, for that both the panels work equally good. When you're reading something on the web, and if your font size is way too small, that is when you'll actually notice the difference between Full HD and Quad HD, because then the DPI and the pixel density will come in really handy to basically segregate both the displays. But other than that, almost 95% of the time, whenever you're using your screen, everything is in motion. And in that motion, you really, really won't be able to tell apart from Full HD to Quad HD. 
especially when both the things are working at 120 hertz personally i feel full hd at 120 hertz is a much much better option because it offers pretty much the same experience and much better battery life as well which is a big thing now there are the cameras and well it's pretty much the most outrightly said statement that we have said about any oneplus phones don't buy a oneplus phone if you like if you're looking for great camera performance it's good it's one of the best camera performing phones from oneplus that we've seen so far but that is still saying from oneplus obviously when you compare it to the competition it's not the best but then again just install gcam on your 80 and it's magic like pure pure magic it works really well and i mean i have been using the pixel 4a uh, we recently put out a long term review of it and side by side the only difference that i get on gcam with my oneplus 80 or the oneplus 82 is the fact that it takes a couple of seconds longer to process the image but the end result is pretty much the same so yeah that is a big plus get any oneplus phone you want just install gcam on it and it works very well and the 80 has a great camera on its own as well and the videos work very well the stabilization is there so no issues whatsoever then there's the software and we already did a thorough video talking about the, all the features of Oxygenos 11 the link to which will be in the description box or in a card here you can check it out uh, but basically what I'll try to say is that Oxygenos 11 it still needs some work but it offers the most stable experience on OnePlus 80 like it runs stable on the 80 as compared to the 8 Pro so that is another added plus and yeah overall the experience as we can find it needs some ui changes slightly here and there and it still needs some optimizations to well be as good as oxygen os 10 was because obviously it's a new ui overhaul so there will be changes but on the whole it's still a good experience and i'm not really one of those guys who will say no i prefer the stock android experience now nah, i like this new look it's okay it's different and it's still functional it's not something overly complicated like new ui so it's fine i like it but it still needs some polishing that made oxygen os as good as it always was then there's the battery and that is a big big factor that helps push someone towards the oneplus 80 over the oneplus 8 pro see both the phones offer great battery backup but the oneplus 80 comes with a 65 watt charging as well i mean this is something that we've been complaining for a very long time the fact that oneplus launched the oneplus 8 and 8 pro with just 30 watts of charging when the competition was already offering 50 55 60 by watts of charging was kind of absurd for OnePlus to charge this high of a price and still not offer faster charging with the OnePlus 8T they fixed that 65 watt charging works really really well and it can basically juice up your phone in about 20 or 22 minutes which is very very good i mean personally i still use it just to top up my phone i've never really had the chance to charge it from 0 to 100 because the battery backup in itself has been that good so like even at the end of the day i always have about 30 to 35% of juice remaining which is pretty good and this is i'm talking about when i'm going out not just sitting at home obviously we come to the studio we drive around a lot so i use my gps i use my spotify and obviously there's web browsing and social media accounts so all of that and i'm still left with 32 35% juice at the end of the day so that's always good So yeah, in a nutshell, the OnePlus 8T offers pretty much everything that the OnePlus 8 Pro. In fact, in some cases even better. Like I talked about the charging and the battery life, and the things that you miss out on, like the certification for IP certification, doesn't really matter a lot. Quad HD resolution only if you're using stills a lot, which again is not a lot, and that's pretty much it. The design is the same. The camera module is different, and at the end of the day the cameras look the same on both the phones uh, like the cameras perform the same on both the phones despite of the hardware differences but yeah personally i feel the OnePlus 80 is a much much better pick than the 8 Pro and not just to, against the 8 Pro but against all of its competing hardware or smartphone devices as well for instance if you compare the OnePlus 80 the direct competitors are the Realme X50 Pro the Mi 10T Pro the iQOO 3 and now after all the discounts the ROG phone 3 as well and the one biggest factor that makes the OnePlus 80 an easier recommend is obviously the design see the ROG and the iQOO 3 they both come off as gaming phones so like you take a single look at them like yeah that's a gaming phone the OnePlus 80 looks more like a polished phone and looks really good for instance there's a Realme X50 Pro that I really really like I loved that phone when it was launched and it's just a sad thing that it was launched uh, during the pandemic which well it did not get the attention that it deserved but now when the OnePlus 8T is in the market 
Yeah, man, the 80s just way more polished than the X50 Pro was. And then there's the Mate NT, and the Mate NT Pro is a very, very good device. Like, I'll be very honest about it. It's a very, very good phone, and I loved using it. But it's just the fact that when you have the OnePlus 8T available in the market for just a couple of thousand bucks more, I think the OnePlus 8T is a better pick because as good as that variable refresh rate on the Mi 10T Pro is, I mean, trust me, it's very, very good. I personally still prefer AMOLEDs over it. Like, yes, <laughs> the Mi 10T Pro offers the best LCD experience out there on any Android device out there. Like, it's literally that good. But as a hardware part, it still lags behind a very good AMOLED panel. And the OnePlus offers one of the best AMOLED panels out there. So why not go with the OnePlus? And that's the main point. See, I'm not saying that you should go out and buy a budget flagship or any flagship phone. For most users, uh, the OnePlus Nord or the Vivo V20 Pro or basically any phone with a 700 series chipset should suffice. But if you're going for flagship, the OnePlus 8T pretty much seals the deal. Anything over that is just an added luxury or just another added showing off point that, okay, yeah, my phone can do this, my phone can do that. For everything that you want from your phone, from everything that you expect from a flagship phone, the OnePlus 8T does all of that with ease. And well, that was my long-term review of the OnePlus 8T. Let me know if you resonate with my thoughts in the comments below or if you have a different opinion, sound off below and we would love to have a chat with you guys. Also, if you like this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more awesome tech content. Till then, this is one from Guiding Tech and I'll see you next time.